Hi, this is Ron Gannett, the pastor at Community Church here in beautiful Saddlebrook, Arizona. And today I'd like to begin a series of videos on what we like to call sibling stuff. You know, we are preaching through the book of James at church, and James was the half-brother of our Lord. And I'm sure that James picked up a lot of information from Jesus that he passes on in his letter called the book of James. And today, I would like for us as grand mentors, people who care about the generations coming behind us, to ask ourselves, what can we learn in this series of videos from James that was taught to him by Jesus? on how we can bless those that come behind us. Well, you know, if you were in church last Sunday, you heard me preach on joy in suffering because James begins this letter by saying, consider it pure joy when you encounter various trials of different kinds. And you know what James is doing is he's trying to tell the early Christian community that was going through a lot of junk and persecution because of their faith that in spite of all the outward circumstances, you can have an inner joy. Well, why? Well, he goes on the passage to talk about how perseverance produces maturity in us, how we have a God of wisdom who has answers for us. There are priorities in life that can humble and change us from pride people, but most of all, he ends by saying there's a crown of, of life that God has for those who persevere. James wanted us to know that suffering and pain will come in our lives, but what's on the outside should never change the, the what is on the inside, the faith, the trust, the joy that we can have as we walk down this path. You know, you are going to suffer. We live in a world where it's, it's broken. We live in a world that's abnormal. We live in a world where there are cancers and drunk drivers and, and, and bad situations that come into all of our lives. Tragedies abound. But the outside doesn't have to change the inside of who we are. And by God's grace, we want to ask ourselves, how can we suffer well so that the generations coming behind us catch a glimpse of how they too can trust in the God of heaven. You know, last Sunday I told our congregation an interesting story I read about Johnny Erickson Tata, who one day was speaking at a convention of women, and she was in the ladies' washroom, sitting in her wheelchair, putting on her lipstick, and a woman there washing her hands turned to Johnny and said, You know, Johnny, you always have a smile on your face. I wish I could have the joy like you have sitting in that wheelchair. Well, Johnny turned to her and said, You know, you know what my day is like? She said, every morning my husband goes to work about 6 o'clock in the morning, and I stay in bed until a friend comes at 7 o'clock to wake me up. And at 7 o'clock I can hear them making the coffee and the clutter and the clatter in the kitchen. And then I know that she's going to come in and she's going to take me out of bed. She's going to give me a bath, which often is embarrassing. Then she's going to clothe me, and she's going to brush my teeth and comb my hair and put on my makeup and get me ready to go out for my day like today. And as I'm sitting in bed, waiting for her to come, I say to God, God, I can't handle this one more day. I am sick and tired of this. And God, if I'm going to be happy and have a smile on my face, it's got to come from you. And a few minutes later, my friend will walk through the door, and I will turn to her with a smile on my face that God gave me, not mine, because I have confidence in him and I am prepared to go through that day. And what you see of me today is a decision I made this morning to let my life and my hope in the God of heaven fill me with such joy that no matter what comes into my path, I can get past it and trust him. My friends, my dad used to say, whenever we went through difficulties, son, just count it all joy. And the God of heaven and the brother of Jesus, James, tells you, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're encountering, to count it all joy and to let the generations coming behind you know that there's a God in heaven who loves them because they see the faith and the trust in the smile on your face.